All right. So my name's uh, Grafton Eliason. Um, so perfectly fine if you call me Grafton. That's my first name. Uh, call me Dr. Eliason if you're not comfortable with that. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my philosophy has always been um, if you call me Dr. Eliason, then I need to call you Mr. or Ms., whatever your last name is. Um, that goes all the way back to this black and white movie with Sidney Poitier called The Sir With Love, where you kind of give each other that mutual respect. And um, but yeah, so Grafton's fine. Um, the. Uh, I guess um, make sure you're in the right class theories. Uh, this is usually one of the first classes that students take. Um, and it's a good foundational class. Uh, a lot of you may have had a class in undergrad on psychological theory, usually if you're in a psych program or something like that. But others may come from a completely different discipline, um, which is fine. Uh, we have people from drama, theater, journalism, all kinds of disciplines. So we do start from the beginning you know, uh, but then hopefully as we move through each theory, um, we go into more detail or maybe add some interesting stories or at least examples um, from my counseling experiences uh, that'll add a little depth if you did have this course or one similar to it before. So maybe a little bit will be redundant uh, but hopefully a lot of it will be new. Um, and uh, I guess what I'd like to do is to start out with my teaching philosophy, because it's probably very different than other professors that you've had. Um, I've been, uh, been counseling since early 1990. Um been here for 20 years as a professor, uh, taught other places before that, Duquesne, the Citadel, Chatham, started a program at Chatham. Um, I've been uh, coordinator of clinical mental health, coordinator of school counseling, KCREP uh, liaison. So I have a lot of different experiences. Uh, now I'm just professor, which is kind of what I like. Um, so because teaching is the whole reason I went into this. Uh, so about my teaching philosophy, um, I'll tell you a little bit about my, my background. Um, I really did not enjoy school in uh, K through 12 or high school. Barely passed high school, got one of those notes that said I could work half the time, so I didn't have to be in school. And, uh, but I was living at home. I, I had a job after I graduated. Um, one of the, so just to date myself, um, the very first personal computer came out uh, in my junior year of high school. And I come from Chambersburg, PA, very rural area. And they got a a grant and got some free computers. Um, so I got some experience in that. And uh, so that's what my first job, well, I was working for North American Moving before that, carrying boxes and working in a garage. But my it first inside job at a desk was on those computers and uh, learned a lot. Uh, it's always helped me out. Um, but uh, you know, my parents wanted me to get some type of formal training, you know, if I was living at home and all that. Uh, so right be, and I'm like, well, I really didn't like school that much. Uh, but, you know, right down the road from my house was Shippensburg University, another Pennsylvania state school. And uh, so I tried it out. And uh, the professors were very different there than they were K through 12. Um, and I think because it was a rural area, many, many times, this was the first time anybody in a family went to college. Um, 
So I think in order to teach in a rural area like that and to work with first generational students, um, I think you really have to be invested in teaching. And uh, they really gave me a lot of attention and time, and I really got to know the professors. It was a totally different environment. In the back of my mind, I thought to myself, wow, this would be like the ideal job with no plans of you know, becoming a teacher or a professor. Um, I was an English lit major. I was studying like world religions on the side, psych minor. And of course, when I graduated, um, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, so um, I always wanted to be a writer. So I applied to all the best writing programs across the country, like a dozen of them. And my professor said, well, you're really interested in religion. Just apply to one religious school. And I really didn't. I was just an interest. You know, I was a seeker. Uh, and um and so I did apply to one, and I guess, you know, fate, divine intervention, whatever you want to call it, I did not get accepted to one school of literature, but I got accepted to the one I did not think I would get accepted to. In fact, I applied to the, that one because I knew I wouldn't get accepted to it. Anyway, so the only place that accepted me was Princeton. Uh, so I went to Princeton, studied religion, and uh, spent some time in India and um, ended up, in order to keep a scholarship, I had to uh, volunteer at a church, uh, work with uh, youngsters. And um, this was uh, right by Trenton. And um, so I really liked working with the kids, uh, teenagers. And um, I identified with them because they had troubles just like I did when I was a teenager. Uh, so I really think I found kind of a place working with working with those young adults and and teens, and uh, ended up ended up doing that for a while. And uh, I I was in a very very small town, smaller than the one I grew up in, uh, in Perry County. Uh, and uh, their claim to fame is no stoplights. So um, anyway, in order to take a job there, I also had to agree to be the ambulance driver because the person they lost used to drive the ambulance. So it gives you an idea of how rural that was, but there weren't any counselors or therapists. The closest hospital was you know, 45 minutes away. Um, and, uh, and there were no local doctors. Uh, so a lot of people ended up telling me their problems and I did not feel qualified to help them. So after a couple of years, I went back to Shippensburg, got a master's degree in counseling and, uh, and I, I, nothing I ever planned. It was just like, kind of, I needed to do this because people keep telling me their problems and I don't know how to help them. So, you know, uh, so then I figured, well, I could be a therapist, a school counselor, or a bartender. <laughs> so, so you know, uh, so I was a school counselor and had a little private practice on the side. Lots of things happened to me that I had never planned for, never expected. Um, so I was the only male therapist in Chambersburg at that time. And uh, so... People would uh, like children and youth and foster care agencies and all kinds of things. They wouldn't have a male therapist to help male children who were abused physically, sexually, emotionally. Um, so just like this course is just a foundation, even by the time you graduate, it's really just foundational knowledge, but I had a lot of good mentors. Um, all the women therapists in the practice said they would help me and teach me anything I needed, and give me weekly supervision. And uh, so even though I had not intended 
uh, that path. Um, I ended up working with a lot of kids uh, who experienced trauma. Um, and uh, so the um, eventually, uh, one of my old professors called and said they started a new program at Duquesne and uh, recommended that before life goes too far, I might as well go get a doctorate. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, taught at a bunch of places, like I said, but as soon as I saw the opening here, I applied and I've been here ever since. And I think it's because I got so much out of this state system uh, when I went to Shippensburg. They're almost identical. And, um, and I think our program uh, really tries to build relationships with students. And I think the students try to build relationships with each other. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of carrying that forward, like all the help my professors gave me, you know, I want to pass on as well. Uh, so, you know, I think the professors in this program, I mean, they are counselors, they should be this way, but I think they really are supportive. I think they care about our students and uh, I think they'll give you whatever time or support that you need to be successful. Um, so <clears throat> just to finish up with my philosophy, my teaching philosophy, first of all, uh, you know, I always hated it when professors would either read from PowerPoints, but before they had PowerPoints, they'd read from their notes. And I'd be like, you're using your notes. Why are you making me write them if you've already got the Just photocopy them or put them on a ditto machine. That's how old I am. Like people would walk into class, pass out the blue dittos and all the kids would smell them because of the chemicals. <laughs> I don't know. It might be why I'm thinking this way now. So the, um, so yeah, I just give you all my notes. So you've got a hundred pages of notes. You can download them a week at a time or all at once. Um, you know, I think, uh, so grades tend to be a stressful part of your educational process. Uh, but my philosophy on grades is if, um, you know, so like right now, uh, they asked me to come and help them revamp their psych unit at St. Clair Hospital. So I've been there all summer um, and uh, been having a great time in the psychiatric unit. And uh, we got a good program there now. But I would not want a doctor that got a B and just made it through a subject um, or crammed the night before the test and got an A by the skin of their teeth, you know? So my goal, you know, is what I believe education should be. If I could make all of my courses pass fail, I would, because you either know the material or you don't. Um, you know the necessary skills or you don't. You know the theories or you don't. And by knowing, I don't mean memorizing them for the comps or the NCE, the National Counseling Exam. That's multiple choice. At least one of the four letters is correct. So you can guess and you've got a 25% chance of being right. When you're with a client, there's no A, B, C, D. There's no multiple choice. You know, so by knowing the material, I mean being able to apply a theory to a case. And that's our goal. So, with that being said, um, all of our exams are take home, all of our exams are um, essay. You uh, apply a theory to a case study I gave you, and it's always the same case study. Uh, so, uh, Corey, the, the book you got, um, Jerry, he, he also has a workbook and he's got the case of Stan. And uh, so I edited the case of Stan for him 
And because he's famous, he gets people think it's great to be able to do these things. And the whole time I'm thinking, why am I editing this guy's book when I could be writing my own? And uh, so, uh, but um, anyway, I think uh, if you want an example of case studies, you can get his case book for like a couple bucks on Amazon used. And you're really just paying for shipping. If you want an example, it's not required. Um, so I use the same case and have you apply different theories to that case the whole way through the semester. And it's not because I'm lazy writing cases. It's because I want you to see that you can apply every theory to some degree to this case. So you can use every theory to some degree. Now, yeah, some theories are better than others for different diagnoses, but to some degree, every theory has value. You're just looking at the client's issues a slightly different way. So that's why we use the same case. But once you take exam one, you'll know, you'll know what the questions are for exam two. So whatever theory it is, we're just going to apply it to that case. Nothing's going to, it's no mystery, you know, I'm not trying to trick you in any way. So because I want you to understand and be able to apply the theories, if uh, you miss something in your essay and one of the questions, uh, I just won't give you a grade. I'll just give it back and you'll redo it. Um, so I'd rather, it's a lot of extra work for me reading it a second time, but I'd rather you get it correct and be able to apply uh, the theory than to just get a B or just make it through the course. Um, the other thing is, you know, um, there's AI and everything like that. Won't even work for these questions. Um, it'll be too generic. Uh, so, you know, just do your own work and be ethical and, um, you know. So the, the only thing I can't have you redo is the final paper. And that's because there's no time to rewrite it. So that's the only thing you won't have a chance to resubmit. But the final paper, paper is all about you. It's about what theory do you like? Why do you like it? Um, it's about uh, what characteristics do you have to become an effective counselor? What do you still need to work on? How are you going to work on it? So there's really no way to get the answers wrong because it's about you. Um, so that's kind of my teaching philosophy. So I'm hoping that that takes a little bit of anxiety away, knowing that you've got a second chance, you've got a third chance. You know, I don't think I can read something more than three times. So, <laughs> so try to get it right the third time around. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so what I thought we would do is... Uh, kind of we'll go over D2L. Just like I'm doing now, it's a lot better for me to record these lectures on my laptop for people who can't make it. Even if you're face-to-face -face and you're sick and you miss a class, you'll still be able to watch it. Um, so if you're able to, uh, I, I would prefer not using the projector and you can use a laptop, a phone, an iPad, whatever you need. We're not going to be, most of this is just going to be me talking anyway. You're really not going to have, like tonight, we're going to look at the syllabus, but I'm going to, I mean, you could actually close your eyes and, you know, meditate while I talk to you, you know? So, uh, so I don't think there's really, a, you know, nothing bad's going to happen if you don't have one. Um, and I'm hoping that giving you the notes, you won't be saying, oh, can you repeat that? Or you're talking too fast. Or uh, what, I, what I'll try to do 
is supplement the notes with stories, you know, examples from the cases that I've had uh, over the last years um, and give you some examples um, and things like that. So, um, all right. So I guess we'll start. I know everybody's wondering about the syllabus. I haven't had people emailing me. I didn't see the syllabus posted. All right. So uh, let's see. Let's look. Uh, we'll just kind of go over the D2L. Um, and I'll tell you kind of what, what it's going to look like each week. So. If you, uh, when you look at the D2L page, um, on this one, you see the syllabus, which we'll go over. Um, the next thing is compiled notes for the entire semester. So you can download those, but it's like 100 pages if you want to print them out. Um, the uh, But, and, and then I also have kind of I'm going to give you the lecture in person so you can ask questions, but I also have a previous lecture on there about the same subject. So um, don't worry, uh, you know, I'm going to post the lecture that I give, uh, but there's also a previous one from, I don't know, a year or two ago on here. Uh, but don't worry if it seems like yeah, I'm repeating myself. Uh, I just posted it up there. I don't even know why, because it's there. Um, and then after that, I did divide the notes by subject. So let's say you just want the notes for the week. Okay, so you can do it that way too. Um, and then after that, uh, Corey provides free PowerPoints. Well, usually lecture... Uh, you know, people who are lecturing, who are too lazy to create their own PowerPoints, download Corey's PowerPoints and put them up on the projector and go through every page of those PowerPoints. There's nothing I hate worse than a PowerPoint lecture. Um, so, but they're there for you, okay? So what they do is like, they provide a nice outline, you know, of Corey's chapters. And just because I gave you notes doesn't mean you shouldn't read the chapter. There's a lot more in that book than there is in my notes. So the way I took the notes is I went through uh, each of the chapters, and I also added to it some things that were not in the chapter, um, but I picked out what was important. So let's say you print out the notes and you're sitting there with a yellow highlighter and I'm talking about things and you start highlighting the notes. And I'm like, why are you highlighting the notes? I've already done that. Everything in the notes is something you need to know. That's why I put it in the notes. So yeah, the whole page should be yellow if you want to highlight it. So yeah, so what you need is in the notes. And there's nothing in the notes that you don't need. Uh, all right. So if you if we're going through the notes and somebody, I remember an undergrad, people ask me, this, so is this going to be on the test? Is it in the notes? So, all right. It's, you know, it's an essay anyway. Um, okay. So, but you can look through the PowerPoints. There's one for each chapter. And uh, the other thing I put there was the ACA Code of Ethics. Uh, so, you know, just for your reference. Um, and uh, the discussion board for this week is um, basically your introductions to one another. And uh, so you can answer those questions. That's also how I'm going to take role. They're going to ask me at the end of the week to fill out a roster. And so please, you know, answer the uh, introductory question so I know you're present, whether you're here in person or online or watching a recording. That's how I'll know whether you're present for this class for the roster. Um, I think one of the other 
uh, most interesting assignments. So you got two exams, final paper, and what I think is the most interesting assignment is the class uh, presentation video. And um, the uh, and we'll go over this when we go over the uh, syllabus, but um, you're going to we're going to pick partners. And for each theory, uh, you're going to pick um, some type of character. Like it could be a Disney character. It could be a Marvel or DC comic book character. It could be a character from a movie. The only thing I ask is that um, if the character doesn't already have a diagnosis. You know, I don't want it to be that obvious. Um, but, uh, you know, um, most Disney characters and Marvel DC comic book characters have a diagnosis. Even Winnie the Pooh characters have diagnoses. So, you know, if you think about them, uh, you could probably come up with something. And this is not a DSM-4 class, you know. Uh, so uh, you're really just going to practice the counseling skills from an assigned theory uh, and I'll post examples as well of other students that did videos so you can see what they're like. Some students used puppets. So students dressed up as Batman or whoever it might be, or Disney princess, the little mermaid. Um, so it's whatever you want to do, you know, to get in character. Uh, but, you know, um, so... The biggest question I had about that assignment was that people like to hear my lectures before they do the assignment because it kind of tells them what they need to do. But you have all my notes. And if you're really worried about what's in one of my lectures, because I can only open up one week at a time on D2L. So I've tried uh, letting people watch my lecture and doing their presentation the next week. But it just gets students confused because your presentation's on one theory and I'm presenting on another theory. So it really, each night really just has to be the same theory. So um, if you really want to watch one of my lectures, you can go to my YouTube page, just my name, and uh, I have all of my class lectures from every class, including like grief and loss up on that page. There's also a lot of religious stuff uh, like sermons and stuff. Just fast forward through those. Uh, but usually if you type in the topic like Gestalt or something like that, it'll take you right to the lecture. So if you really want to watch it, um, you know, or, you know, if you're taking a class in something else, you're like, I wonder what Grafton would say about that. She probably won't do, but, you know, feed my ego a little bit. Uh, you know, you could always check it out. So let's go over the syllabus. And, yeah. Um, I saw that on the discussion post that there's support to make about who you are. It says we will also be meeting on Zoom this Thursday at 5. And I didn't Oh. Yeah, well, I guess that's uh, from a previous class. Let me change that right now. Uh-oh, wow. All right, here we go. It's gone. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, if it's a summer semester and it's like five weeks or seven weeks, people don't have time to do all of these big projects. So I usually have them do a discussion board each week. But if we have 15 weeks, we have time to do the good projects. 
Yeah, discussion boards are more like, I don't know, did they read the chapter? <laughs> All right, so we'll kind of go over the syllabus. The main thing you're going to want to look at in the syllabus is the timeline. And, uh, and we'll talk, we'll walk through the semester, basically. I mean, you know, we have a snow day or some emergency. It's a flexible timeline, you know. Um, so one of the first things I have up here is the book. And I did send out an email. Hopefully you got it uh, that you can buy the brand new book. No problem. Corey makes some changes so he can come out with a new edition and sell more books. Um, so, but all these theorists are dead. These theories don't change. So, you know, buy a couple editions that are previous and I don't know, get them for under 20, get a book for under 20 bucks. If you do that, and let's let's say you get a book from Amazon for 20 bucks, that's two editions old. Play, pay for shipping. You know, don't I don't want to hear like three weeks in, I haven't got my book yet. Uh no, if you get it for 20 bucks, pay extra for fast shipping. So all right. Yeah, I don't care what edition you get. Like, don't get don't get like one or two. You know, although they're probably okay. Um, you know, I think we're up to like edition 10 or something like that. So, no, but you know, any of the last four or five editions would be okay. There's also like the case book. There, the student manual is like a workbook. I don't think he has a recent version of that. I don't think it was selling as well. So, I don't. I don't know if there's a re and if you get one of those used, somebody probably already filled in the answers, you know. So course objectives, you can read them on your own. Let's kind of walk through the semester. And uh, so the first three chapters are kind of an introduction to the subject. And so, you know, you can catch up on them. Um but after this week, each chapter is one theory. So it's really easy to focus on a theory. One a week, one chapter. That's it. Um, with that being said, it's only one chapter. Read the chapter. So, so as I'm saying that, you know, this graduate program is very different than undergrad programs. At the end of this program, you're going to have to take the competency exams, the comps, in order to graduate. You're going to have to take the national counselor exam, counseling exam, in order to get your license. So those are exams you can't cram for. It's about every class that you've taken. So that's two years or more worth of classes. You can't study for that. So please, a lot of times, professors like me don't give you exams. You know, we I give you a take-home essay. You know, it's called an exam, but it's not a test like you'd see, you know, in the comps or the NCE. So People don't tend to memorize in the same way unless they're forced to. But in graduate school, you have to force yourself to memorize this information chapter by chapter, theory by theory, because it's not something you can memorize two years from now when you're memorizing 10 other different subjects. So just because I don't force you to memorize something doesn't mean you don't have to. So um, you should be able to talk fluently about these theories. After all, you're going to be working with real people in your practicum. That's going to be here before you know it. 
and ethically. Do you really want to skip a theory when you're working with a real human being with real issues? You know, don't be that guy. So, yeah, you should know these theories. Um, there's a couple things I'd like to highlight. Uh, so, our first exam is number is, is exam number two. And the reason for that is uh, I took out exam number one. You don't have to do exam number one. It's on like Freud, you know, and Jung. And uh, I would rather you do the project, you know, the, the video where you're working with a client than another exam. And it was honestly just too much to have three exams, a final paper, and a project. So I, I did away with exam number one. So there's only two exams. Starts on week seven. That's right around where midterms would be. Um, and there's three theories on each exam. And I'll tell you what those theories are beforehand. Um, you'll have one week to do the exam. And so I'll release the exam on a Tuesday before class and we'll go over it in class. And you'll have one week to complete it and it'll be due before the next class. So, you know, Tuesday before four o'clock because I'd like to talk about the answers in class. And it just wouldn't be fair if you didn't have your exam turned in to hear all the answers. So that's the goal, one week, uh, should be plenty of time. Um, next exam will be due week 12 and uh, three theories again, same case study. Um, and uh, so week 14, it's a weird schedule for week 14 because it tells you that Thanksgiving break doesn't begin till Wednesday, okay? But it also, uh, the university also has what's called a fall break and they give everybody Friday off. Um, so you don't even have classes on Friday, but it is what it is, uh, you know? So, <laughs> and then they make it up this Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So they have Friday classes this Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. So we don't, you know, we're not making up any Friday classes, but we we won't have a Tuesday class. So technically you get a bonus day off for uh, Thanksgiving, basically. It still turns out as they planned it, we still have 15 weeks uh, in the semester, 16 with finals, one week off for Thanksgiving and fall break. Um, and we cover all the theories that we need to cover. Um, so that's the story with week 14 in case some of you are saying, oh, you know, it says we don't have off till Wednesday. That's why. Um, a lot of thought went into this. Uh, okay. So... There are kind of matrices for K crap, and uh, and there is a grading system, but as you know, you're just gonna have to keep doing it until you get it right. So hopefully, you know, my goal is for you to get an A. Uh, I'd rather it just be pass fail, but you know, they don't want us to do that. Um. So the only people who have failed this class are people who haven't turned in an exam or a project or a paper, because I can't help you if you don't turn anything in. There's nothing I can do. Uh, so you do have to give it a shot, you know, take the time. Um, so uh, I can't wait until the end of the marking period for you to hand in everything. So let's say I give you the first exam, exam two, and I say, hey, you missed a couple things here, but we went over it in class. I think you'll be able to 
add to it and do well. So I give it back to you. You know, that needs to be handed in before you take the next exam. So I think that's fair. That's a few weeks. And uh, that way you're not working on two exams at the same time. I don't, I think that would be a little hectic and stressful. Uh, exam three, got to turn that in before the last class. And the paper, like I said, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, you don't get a chance to rewrite it, but it's all about you. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it won't be too stressful. But these exams are not exams that you can write the night before. It's going to, I would spend, I would give each essay answer a day, you know, um, and even if it's open book, you know, because it takes some thought, you know, you, you've got this specific case, you've got to write it out and there's different parts to it. So you have to give each question time to process in your mind. Uh, so do that. Don't try to write it all the night before. Um, okay, presentation. Let's let's talk about that a little bit because I think that's the most fun. And uh, so each student will have a partner. And even if we have an odd number of students, uh, we have family systems, so that can have three in that group. Um, and uh, so the video has three different parts to it. The whole thing is only 30 minutes, so it's not a long video. Um, and uh, it's on one of the theorists that we cover, and it's due the night of the theory. And uh, so that we can all watch it. That's the goal. We want to watch your video and laugh and say, well, how interesting. And uh, so you're going to pick a character in a novel, a play, a movie, a television show, a comic book, any character. And it's going to include three things. And I even, because people were wondering about this, like how many minutes should each section be? So and once again, what's the worst thing that could happen? If you fail the video miserably, what, what would happen? You do it again. Yep, do it again. Uh, so you have an introduction about the case. Give it some tentative diagnosis. What's the issue? What's the history of the character? So the background, the origin story. And uh, that's like five minutes, five to seven minutes. The main part of the video, 15 minutes, is applying the theory to the client. And you're going to, so let's say you choose uh, Glasser. And so William Glasser, you're going to pretend to be William Glasser, and you're going to be counseling some character. And, uh, you know, I would not do a first session with the character because first sessions are like get to know you, you know. You're going to know this character because you just went through the whole intro telling us about the character. So this is around session three so that you can apply a couple techniques from the theory. And it's, you're not only applying techniques, you have to use terminology and other aspects of the theory. A lot of students see, oh, two techniques. Okay, I'll do two techniques. It's more than two techniques. Two techniques have to be included, but there's more to a theory than techniques. There's all kinds of uh, aha experiences. Um, so, so yeah, apply the terminology of the theory. Apply at least two techniques, but go beyond the techniques. When I watch the video or when you watch it as a class, we should be able to guess what theory it is if we didn't know. It should be obvious. And then the third part is a little discussion of the session 
and what techniques you used and what other aspects of the theory were used. So kind of process the session. This is what happened. This is what we did with the client. And that's like six to eight minutes. So the whole thing needs to be 30 minutes. Uh, the main part is a therapeutic session. And don't read from a script. Have it kind of memorized. You know, make it seem like a real therapeutic session. And, uh, you know, have fun with it. Once again, you can't wait till the last minute to do this. And a lot of times people don't want to impose upon their partners. Uh, but don't submit your video unless you've watched it. <laughs> Might sound like a basic thing. Watch the video if you don't like it, or if you might say, well, Grafton's a nice guy. He'll let it go. Don't make me that guy. Don't make me say redo your video. If you think that, redo it yourself. You've got weeks to do it again. So do it as many times as you think are necessary until you really like it. So many people are used to just doing it one time, handing it in. Do it, watch it, evaluate it, talk with your partner. How do we make this better? What do we miss? And do it a couple times. You could do it in three different, you could do the three different sections. You know, like one partner will do part one, and then you'll both do the counseling session. Then the other partner will do the summary. And you can do that separately, you know, if you want. That way, if you mess up on one section, you don't have to record the whole thing again. But it's only 30 minutes. You can do that four or five times. It's only a couple hours. Do you want to do two with your partner where you're switching roles? No, you just one. Just one video. One, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can flip to see who gets therapist and who gets character or whoever wants to dress up. And that's not a requirement. <laughs> so we get some interesting characters, but it's a fun thing to watch. And, you know, it's kind of fun while we're learning. You know, there's not a lot of fun learning experiences in grad school. We got to make do with what we got. All right. So, uh, some questions, and I'm going to post examples that you can watch before you have to create your own video. So questions in general about that project. All right. Pair us up or are we going to pair ourselves up? Uh, well, I'm going to let you pair yourselves up. And for people who don't know other people, we'll match them up. All right. And then I'm, I'm going to go over the paper later, but honestly, the outline of the paper is in the syllabus. And if you follow A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's the paper. But before it's due, I don't want to inundate you with too many assignments right now, and it's not due until the very last class. So um, it does say paper presentation in the syllabus. That's informal. You're not going to get in front of the class or anything, but I do kind of want to hear what you say. I want you to share it with your classmates. Um, I just think it's interesting for you to hear one another. What would you come up with? You know, it's good to share things. So informally. Oh, I this often what I discovered, how I came across it. Kind of. <laughs> it's like, I really like this theory because. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so but we'll we'll go into that in depth before the papers do. Don't worry. Um, we already talked about the exams, open book, open notes. Um, I I reserve the discussion boards usually for shorter semesters. I don't think we'll have a lot of. We might have one. So I think if we do a discussion board, it'll be like an exercise, like apply Grafton's theory to a most recent lucid dream you've had, something like that. That's what it'll be. It'll be like an experiential activity if we have one. 
All right. And then you'll get to read about each other's experiences. Uh, okay. So, you know, any type of accommodations I'm happy to help you with. Um, make sure you do go through Office for Students with Disabilities. Uh, John Masala, he's, he's in the office and uh, he and I sat in the back of the classroom for two years together every Saturday. So he's a good guy. He'll help you out. Uh, have integrity. Attendance. Uh, I think it really does make a difference um, if you are face to face to come to class, even though you, you know, Technically, you're not supposed to be online, but it's there. It's tempting. It's cold out. You know, uh, you're running late. Grafton records all the videos, but come to class. I like having a class with a lot of students in it. We get to talk um, and come to Zoom. Come to Zoom. Don't watch the recording if you're able to. Bum, bum. Okay. Uh, Tavera. If you don't have Tavera, try to buy it uh, at some point this semester. Um, but at the end of class, for every class for Tavera, you're going to write one paragraph about every class and what you got out of it. This is not an evaluation of the class. I hated this class. Grafton was so egotistical, you know, thought he knew everything. No, this is about you. OK, there's separate evaluations for that other stuff, you know, uh, so this is even the worst class you can learn something from. You can take something with you. So talk about some personal growth that you received or achieved from not only this class, but every every class. So that's one paragraph. That's what you do for every class. Each class will have a separate project that you upload to Tavera. The project for this is your final paper. So, all right, let's see what else we got. Oh, that's the end of the syllabus. All right, how we doing? How are you feeling about this so far? How's everybody doing online? Quiet. Good, thumbs up. All right, good. Let's um, let's take 10 minutes, come back at like five after, and then we're going to, uh, it's a challenge, but we'll try to come up with partners for the project so we get that out of the way. And, um, and what theory you're going to do. And then we'll talk a little bit about history, okay? All right.